Today, I'm going to be walking you through how to make a digital planner in Google Sheets. My name is Rebecca Simons, and welcome to the Educate Community's December Make and Take. If you're a teacher and you haven't made the jump to digital planning, I hope this video will be the motivation you need to make the leap. Even though I'm not teaching in a K-12 classroom anymore, I still use a digital planner for what I call vision planning or long-term planning. This is the space where I map out all my projects and deadlines. This process not only ensures that nothing falls through the cracks, but I also have a record so I'm not scrambling to remember what I did this time last year. Digital planning is amazing because I can access my plans from anywhere. It makes it easy to share and collaborate with my colleagues, but possibly my favorite part is the ability to hyperlink all of my resources. This becomes my hub where I can link websites, documents from my drive, YouTube videos, and so much more. As part of this make and take, I'm going to include this file that includes five different layouts and the sizing for each. Then we're going to walk through how to create a week view together, which is template number three. Before we get started, I want to demonstrate several skills we're going to be using during this make and take. Consider this a resource section that you can come back to if you can't remember how to do something. Each skill will be timestamped in the description below. If you already feel pretty comfortable in sheets, feel free to jump ahead to the part of the video where we're going to walk through how to create a planner together. Number one, adjusting cell width. Right click on a row or column, then click resize column or resize row. Enter your new width in pixels. Skill number two, selecting multiple cells, rows, or columns. If you want to select multiple cells, rows, or columns that are adjacent or right next to one another, click on the first part of your selection, hold down shift, then click on the last part of your selection. To select cells, rows, or columns that are not right next to one another, you're going to hold down control or command, then click on the items you want to select. For example, if I only wanted column A, C, and E, I can select all of these together by holding down the command or control key. Skill number three, move to the last column or row. To quickly move to the last column or row, click Control, Shift, and the arrow key pointing in the direction you want to travel. To move to the last column, you'll press the right arrow key. To move to the last row, you'll press the bottom arrow key. Skill number four, delete or add rows and columns. To delete or add a row or column, right click, then select insert or delete column. For example, if I only wanted five visible columns, I could select row F, then press control shift right arrow to select all of the columns to the end of the sheet, then right click and select delete columns. Now I only have five visible columns on my sheet. Skill number five, merging cells. To merge cells, select the cells you want to merge, then click format, merge cells, merge all. Skill number six, change a cell's color. To change a cell's color, select the cell or cells you want to change, then click on the paint bucket icon. You can choose from one of the preset colors or select a custom color. Skill number seven, change text formatting and alignment. To change a text formatting or alignment, select the cells you want to format, then use the drop downs and icons in the formatting toolbar. You can change the font style, size, color, and apply rich text formatting such as bold or italics. You can also control the horizontal alignment and the vertical alignment of the text, as well as the direction of the text. Skill number eight, 
go to the next line within the same cell. To go to the next line within the same cell, press Control or Command and Enter at the same time. Skill number nine, add checkboxes. To add checkboxes, select the cells you want to add checkboxes to, then select Insert Checkboxes. Skill number 10, add borders. Select the cells you want to add borders to, then select the border icon. You have the option to change the border color as well as the border weight or style. Then choose which part of your selection you want to apply your border to. For example, I might only want to apply this red border to the outer border. Skill number 11, add a hyperlink. You can hyperlink any text in your sheet. Simply highlight the text you want to link, then click the link icon or press Control K. You can search for a file in your drive, link to another sheet in your existing file, or copy and paste in a URL. Skill number 12, insert images. To add images to your sheet, click insert image. Decide whether you want your image to be constrained to a specific cell or if you want the ability to move it over cells. I tend to insert over cells unless I'm inserting a header for an entire sheet or a section. The 12 skills I just covered are the ones I'll be using to create a digital planner with you today. So remember, if you ever need to go back and review any of them, they're there for you. When you sit down to start creating a planner, simply staring at a blank Google Sheet can be a little intimidating. So I encourage you to start with a rough sketch. Begin by thinking about the elements you wanna include in your digital planner and how you want to organize them. Here are some things to think about. Do you want a month view or a week view? If you have multiple preps or teach all subject areas, then a week view will probably be more beneficial. Do you want your dates to run across the top or along the side of your calendar? Finally, think about what kind of extras you want to include. For example, when I was teaching seventh grade, I always had a to do, to grade, and to copy list. Once you have a rough sketch, you're going to create a master template. I'm going to walk you through creating the one that's labeled as template week A. Now this particular design has nine columns, so we're going to begin with changing the column widths to the following sizes. Column A is 40 pixels, so I'm going to right click on column A, resize column, and type in 40. Then I'm going to continue down my list here until I reach column I. So column B, resize. 110 and of course you could change these sizes to any size you want um, but these are the ones that I found worked best for me. Um, C through G are all the same size so I'm going to highlight and resize them all at once and these are going to be 225 pixels. Then I'm going to drag this over a little bit more. I'm going to resize column H which is 25 pixels, and then I'm going to resize column I, which is 200 pixels. Next, I'm going to delete the remaining columns by clicking on column J, then pressing Control, Shift, and the right arrow key. This will select all the columns to the end of my sheet. Then I'm going to right click and select Delete Columns J through Z. I can always add columns back if I need them for some reason. All right, moving on to rows. We are going to be working with 27 rows. So I'm going to click in row 28 and press Control Shift down arrow. Then I'm going to right click and select delete rows. Now we can begin formatting row height and merging cells. Now the top row is going to serve as a calendar header. So I'm going to select it and make my row height 160 pixels. Then I'm going to click on Format, Merge Cells, Merge All. And it takes all nine of my columns and turns them into one cell instead of nine individual cells. 
Next, I'm going to click to highlight row two. Then I'm going to hold down shift and click on row 27. And this will allow me to resize all of these rows at once. I like my rows to be somewhere between 25 to 30 pixels. For this planner, I chose to split the difference and go with 27. All right, now we're going to be working in column A. I'm going to click and drag to highlight cells A3 through A7. Then I'm going to click Format, Merge Cells, Merge All. And I'm going to repeat this process four more times all the way to the bottom. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm merging one, two, three, four, five cells at a time all the way to the bottom. All right, now I'm going to move over to column B and I'm going to select cells B3 through B7 and I'm going to merge those cells. So format, merge cells, merge all. Then I'm going to repeat this process four more times all the way down to the bottom again. Next, I'm going to select cells A2 and B2 and merge them together. I'm also going to merge cells H2 and I2, H12 and I12, and finally cells H20 and I20. Next, we can start formatting the cell fonts and colors. I'm going to begin by selecting column A. Now you can change the font type, size, and color to anything you prefer, but for this demonstration, I'm going to be using Delius Unicase, size 14, and I'm just going to pick this red that's uh, it's labeled dark red two. Then I'm going to choose horizontal center alignment and vertical middle alignment. This will put the text in the direct center of my cell. Next, I'm going to change my text rotation so that it's going up and down. This is what this will look like. So I'm going to type in Monday and I'm gonna finish by typing in the rest of the days of the week. Next, I'm going to format column B. I'm going to again set the font to Delius Unicase. This time my font size will be 24 and I'm going to choose this color right here, light cyan three. Next, I'm going to change the horizontal and vertical alignment so my text is centered. For this design, I want to include the month abbreviation and the date. So I'm going to begin by typing in December now, to get your number to go under the month, you're going to press Control Enter, which will allow you to go to the next line while staying within the same cell. Now, because this is my template, I don't actually want to fill in my months and dates. I want to leave this information blank so I can make copies of this sheet. Next, I'm going to highlight all of row two and change the fill color by clicking on the paint bucket. I'm going to use the light cyan three. Then while I have row two highlighted, I'm going to change the text formatting. Again, I'm going to use Delius Unicase size 14, but this time I'm going to make my font color white. Then again, I want to horizontally and vertically center my text. Here's what this would look like. I'm just going to set this up with default categories like category one, category two, category three, and so on and so forth. If for some reason you didn't have five categories, you could simply delete out a column by right-clicking at the top of the column, then selecting delete column. Now let's start formatting row I. To select multiple cells that aren't connected, we're going to hold down control, then click on the cells we want to format. In our case, I'm going to hold down control and click on I2, I12, and I20. I'm then going to change the background color and make the changes to my font type, size, color, and text alignment. Now I'm going to label each section. When I was teaching, I liked to keep three list categories, to do, to grade, and to copy. 
If you prefer to only have one large section, instead of breaking it down into categories, all you have to do is click on I-12 and I-20, then go to Format, Merge Cells, and Unmerge. Next, I'm going to add checkboxes. I'm going to hold down Control, and I'm going to select all of the small boxes in column H, skipping over I-12 and I-20. Then I'm going to click Insert, Checkbox. Now I can check off items as I complete them. Finally, I'm going to add some definition with borders. I'm going to begin by adding a solid border to everything. Then I'm going to go back in and change certain areas. So I'm going to click on A2, hold down Shift, and click in cell I27. Then I'm going to click on the border icon, and I'm going to change my border color to dark three, dark gray three. And I'm going to change my border weight to the middle choice. Then I'm going to click on all borders. Next, I'm going to change the border style to dotted lines, and I'm going to select individual sections that I want to apply the border style for, like my to-do section. So I'm going to highlight my to-do section, click on borders, change the style to dotted lines, then I only want to apply the style to my horizontal border lines. And you can see here, I still have the dark bold lines, but everything in the middle has changed to dotted. Repeat this process until all your borders look the way you want them to. Finally, you can add fun elements to your planning page. Sheets allows you to add images within a cell or on top of a cell. Anything you add on top of a cell functions like a planner sticker. For example, I might design a cute sticker in Canva that says staff meeting. I could then click on insert image, insert image over cells, and select it from my downloads. I can now move this image anywhere on my digital planner. You can also add an image inside a cell. I like to use this option for headers. Here's an example of what this would look like. The header box for this planner is 1400 by 160 pixels. At this point, you've created your template. Simply double click where it says sheet one and type template. Never enter any content on this sheet. Anytime you need a new copy, simply right click on the sheet and click duplicate. I'm going to name my duplicate copy with the date range for this week. So this would be 1128 through um, 12, ooh, what is it, 12-2, I think. And then I can start entering content. Now, my favorite part about digital planning is the ability to hyperlink. As I talked about in the resource section, to hyperlink, simply type in your activity, then highlight the text and press the link icon in the toolbar or control K. You can literally link to anything on the internet. It's a huge time saver, so you aren't having to track down items in your drive, Google Classroom, or the link to the video that you wanted to show in class. Between hyperlinks, the option to collaborate with others, and the ability to edit my plans from anywhere at any time, I'm sold on digital planning. In my book, it's the only way to go. Thank you for joining us for our December make and take with the Educate community. I would absolutely love to see the designs you come up with for your digital planners or hear about how you're using them. Feel free to drop me a comment down below or send me an email. Hope to hear from you soon. See you next time.